So first DBQ review session, everybody. Um, let's go ahead and just jump right back in, jump into it. May 21st is your date at 2 p.m. However, I don't want you guys to think, oh, good, it starts 2 p.m. Let me log on at 1.55, okay? Don't do that. I just went to a meeting um, this earlier this week, and uh, it was basically geared towards you guys are going to get a um, – what do you got? An email. And it's going to have instructions. It's going to have login information and stuff like that. So you're going to have to go in and get these, uh, uh, basically do this login process. You need to make sure that you are, let me mute everybody real quick so I hear some background noise. Uh, you are going to have to do this process, this login process, and there's probably going to be a security screening and things like that. Uh, Fayola and uh, Fayola, nothing uh, too distracting, please. So if you guys want to turn your screens off or if you have some sort of crazy meme up or whatever, please don't be distracting. And people in the chat, make sure you're paying attention. If you have a question, type it in the chat, and I'll try to address it, but don't like just sit there and talk about anything in the chat while we're doing this, okay? So what I want you guys to do, just right off the bat, practice logging in to AP Classroom. Because I'm pretty sure the same login you're going to be using for that is the same login you'll be using for the day of the exam. So if you have problems going in or problems remembering your password and such, first thing I'm going to let you guys know, practice logging into AP Classroom and just getting that done. Um, if you did not get the email from AP uh, Classroom, I had somebody call in earlier today, okay? And it was basically confirming their AP tests and everything like that. If you didn't get it, apparently not everybody got it at once and they'll be sending them out by the end of the month. Now, if the end of the month is rolling around, you know, April, you know, whatever, 29th or 28th and you still haven't gotten it, call up the customer service number. It's super easy to find on the website, but it's for students and parents and I'll make sure to uh, post that information on the website. Um, so be aware of that. So again, you will be getting an email with information about, uh, the AP test and how to log in and everything like that, but practice logging into AP classroom and please, 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 please don't try to log in at like 155 for a 2 PM exam. Try to start logging in at like 145, 130, just to be sure. All right. We got that out of the way. Any questions, um, before I move to the next part? All right. Oh, I got the email. Was it a survey we needed to complete? No, it wasn't the survey. It was just to confirm your uh, test time, which is the May 21st at 2 p.m. But again, I want you to be ready to take it by 1.30. So just be in front of a computer, 1.30, 1.45. Be ready to log in. How long is this going? Is this today going to be? Maybe about an, I don't know, hopefully like an hour or something, maybe less. I'm, try, I'm just giving out some basic information first, and then we're going to go into exactly what we're going to be doing. All right, well, if you have Spanish too, I, I get it, but you, you do your thing. I will post that, Ahmed. I haven't posted it just yet. So let's go to the next part. Uh, you're going to have 45 minutes to do a modified DBQ, five, okay, five documents. If you guys have a pen and paper or something to write with, I want you to write this down so you could practice this as we do our five, um, as we do our five prompt DBQs. Okay, which as we get later in this process, we'll start practicing actual ones. Here's the recommended times that you would do. I would say anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes to read um, the prompt, analyze it, read your documents, and analyze those as well. Okay, so 10 to 15 minutes to read the prompt, read your um, documents get the main idea, get, you know, how this answers the prompt. Okay. You want to go ahead and have that in there. Um, so 10 to 15 minutes for that. Um, the next thing I would take is five minutes to set up your arguments, you know, so 10, 15 minutes, read and analyze five minutes to kind of set up your arguments, you know, those groupings, you know, 
this is how documents two, five, seven answer the prompt. This is how uh, three, six, and one answer the prompt. Your two groupings, as you'd put it. So you set it up, outline what you want to write, your contextualization, that kind of stuff. So now you're about up to around 20 minutes. The last 20 minutes or so, 25 minutes, I would say you should be writing by this point. Okay, so the last 20 to 25 minutes, you should be writing. Okay, so your first 20 minutes or so is all planning, you know, 10, 50 minutes to read and analyze the prompt, read and analyze the documents, get the main idea, how it answers the questions, five minutes to outline it and really set up your groupings and your arguments, and then 20 minutes or so to write this, okay? Uh, Tyreek is, oh, Jada asked me, if we don't confirm it, can we still take the test? Jada, just confirm it. Stop being crazy. Um, Tyreek, I thought we had prep time. There is no prep time. It's the same thing as if you were in my classroom and I said, here is your paper. Fayola, I told you not to do anything distracting. What's that crazy background? Either turn your screen off or something. All right. Um, no, there's no prep time. It's basically as soon as you log in and as soon as you get the stuff, it's going to be on your, you'll be through a browser, kind of like you would an AP classroom and boom, that's it. You'll, um, you'll start doing it. Now it's going to be kind of weird because the DBQ is going to be digital. So I would definitely recommend you have some written sort of, help for yourself. And I'm going to introduce you guys to something with that later. Okay. So before I get to that, or you know what, let's actually get into that. At the beginning, I'm going to give you me. Oh, I can't minimize it when I'm recording the meeting. Oh, I can share my screen though. Okay. There we go. I got to start sharing my screen now. Here is my website under exam review is where you're going to find some very good information. Now I was talking to you guys about you know, what you should be writing down. And this is going to be a digital DBQ. So you're not going to be able to out, like really mark up the documents. But this at-home planning sheet, I want all of you to print this out or get a printout of it prior to you doing the DBQ, okay? You know, definitely uh, do this because, well, if you do, you'll have a place to write. So you'll see... On the screen, doc one, you could write the main idea, some notes, you know, maybe some hip analysis if you have time. That's that's a little bit later. We'll get into that. You have that for the five documents. And then, you know, it gives you kind of a reminder, you know, thesis. Did you respond to all parts of the thesis? Does it ask you to compare and contrast? If you didn't do both, then you are not answering the question and you won't get a point. You won't get those points you need. If I'm asking you to write about A, write about A. But if I'm asking you to write about A, B, and C, and you only address A, and you just ignore B and C, you're not gonna get any credit, okay? So these are good reminders to have during it. And I, again, I want you guys to print this out when we do this five uh, document DBQ, and maybe even start using it now, so, so you get used to it. Over here, you have an outline where you can kind of like put some reminders about the context, write in your thesis, maybe even have an idea of your topic sentence. Don't spend too much time on this outline again, because remember, 10, 15 minutes to read and analyze the prompt in the documents, five minutes to maybe use this to set up your arguments, and then 20 minutes to write it in. That means you actually have to write it into the browser. Or, I mean, you could possibly use a Word document, type it into your Word document, and then copy and paste it into the browser. That's a little dangerous though, and I'll tell you why. And that's because if you do that, you, um, you run the risk of, let's say the timer runs out and you have nothing in your browser. That's why paying attention to the timer is so important. If you're, you, can, you could type the most amazing essay in the world on your Word document. But if it's not in the browser, if it's not in where you need to submit, that sucks. When you go to submit it and it's blank, that's gonna be a problem. Because I'm pretty sure what's gonna happen is there's gonna be a 45 minute timer. And as soon as that reaches 45 minutes, that's it. Your keyboard's probably gonna be locked. 
or at least where you could type is going to be locked. So be very, very careful when it comes to um, using Word and typing other places, okay? Let me go to a few questions here. Um, sorry, Abraham, I'm sorry, I, didn't, I saw the first ones. I don't know what the, the test is going to be. If I knew it was going to be that, I would tell you that, but I, I don't know that information. Okay, so I don't know if it's going to be an evaluate prompt or, or whatever prompt it's going to be because why would they give that to me? Okay, um, Kiara is asking about what about the security thing? Wouldn't it show us the rest of the test? Well, there is no showing us the rest of the test. Most likely, it'll be like the DBQ that you see. You'll have access to the documents and everything, just like you would on AP Classroom, I'm assuming. And then um, you'll be doing it like so. Kiara, I think you're asking about, like if you were searching things up. Remember, a DBQ is not about the information that you can look up. You know what I mean? Like a DBQ is using the documents to argue a point. So, I mean, I'm just gonna tell you this right now. We, we talked about this in, earlier this week. If you're trying to cheat, it's probably gonna catch you. Like, I know some of you guys are probably thinking about, man, I could share, you know, my DBQ outline with somebody else, but they're going to most likely college boys going to be like, okay, well, these two people are Mr. Mathos's class. These two people also took the test at the same time. And they're also, they're, they, they made their arguments the exact same way. Like that's probably going to be enough to put a red flag on you. Um, Kiara is typing, no, as if we, if we switch to word, it might flag us as cheating since we left the test screen. I don't know how that's going to work. Although, they did say they're going to have like some things in place. I don't know if it's going to be that way, if it's going to flag you. I don't think so. They're going to give us more information tonight. I've got a meeting at 7 o'clock. Okay, so I don't know what's going to happen with that. But the, the instructions will be clear. Okay, guys, don't worry about it. Um, I heard the test was hosted by AP Classroom, but it might be more secure browser. It might be a secure browser. But I don't think it will be that because that's going to force you guys to download something onto a computer. Now, if they gave it, if they gave a bunch of computers out from the computer from the school, you know that you can't install anything on those computers. So I don't think that's going to happen. Um, are they going to know? Are they going to do a practice exam so we know the entire layout and everything? If you guys notice on AP Classroom there's already practice opportunities up. You just have to look for, the, if you look a little bit, there are practice opportunities up, okay? So please be aware of that. Like you, there are optional student reviews on there, all right, that I have nothing to do with. It's all through AP. All right, so any questions on the 2020 at-home DBQ planning sheet? Again, I think all of you can unmute yourselves at this point. So if you have a question, you could say it. All right. I don't hear anybody, so we're gonna we're gonna move along. Let me close that down for a second. All right, that goes through the resources. Okay. Let's talk about one last thing. Um, I'm hoping everybody has looked at the Heimler video. Wait, hold on. It looks like some people are having some trouble unmuting. Let me um let me stop my share real quick to see if I can do this again. Um, you, you can unmute yourself. It's saying, I'm, okay, I unmuted all again. And girl, you've been just rocking your auntie's little Okay, that was a bad idea. Mute all again. <laughs> okay, if you have a question, just type it in the chat. I'll be able to get to it that way because it seems like a lot of people have some background noise. All right, let me go back to share screen. All right, if you have not already, please watch this video, How to DBQ in 2020. It gives you a lot of good notes um, on this. This is kind of like some of the notes from there. And um, let me put the chat back up here. And uh, he goes into detail on a lot of other things. So please watch it. Uh, he will also be doing an entire video series dedicated to this exam. So please, please, please stay tuned to his station, subscribe, do whatever you got to do to uh, stay up on it. I'll continue to link them on the website, of course. All right. Now, again, I have the chat up, so please just go on there and you'll see it. 
DBQ rubric information is right here. What we're going to focus on today is contextualization. All right. Uh, contextualization is, oh, you know what? Before we get there, I know some, I know everybody's probably curious about this. I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second so I can see everybody. I'm going to unmute everybody. I hope, but let me see. Hopefully everybody's in a good place. They don't need to be unmuted. Let's find out. Okay. So stop me when you're doing something. So the 10 Thank point you. rubric, do you guys all have access to um, my website right now? Yes. 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 Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Then cool. This is what I want you guys to do. I'm going to share my screen with you guys so you could do it as I'm doing it. Go to my exam review uh, page on the website. And I want you to go down to the rubrics. Okay, so please go to, once again, my website. Open this mini DBQ rubric under DBQ info and rubrics. The reason I want you to do this is I want to explain to you guys what myself and another uh, teacher have been really discussing. And he's been right a lot of times in the past. Oh, wait, is this the right one? Okay, here we go. Please click on the modified DBQ rubric, the one that's right at the bottom, modified DBQ rubric 2020. You all have access to that yet? Yeah. Okay. I heard one person say yes, yeah, so I'm going to assume everybody is at least right here. You can see my screen, or you have this up on your screen. And <laughs> Yeah. All right. So this rubric is out of 10 points. Now, using the same curve that College Board has, <laughs> Mary, if you're giggling about something, giggle somewhere else, please, or mute yourself. All right. So the modified 2020 DBQ, this is a check sheet that I'm giving you guys. It's out of 10 points. Myself and another teacher are thinking you can get four points and get a three, which means you're going to get the college credit. All right. Does that make so I want to make sure we're clear here when you go down this line. So the thesis is worth one point. Does everybody see that? Yeah. Okay. Textualization yeah. worth one point. You okay. get three evidence points, two evidence beyond the documents, and then three analysis and reasoning that equals 10. So you have to aim to get four points to pass this exam. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is because. I want to be strategic with you guys. Not all of us are the best writers, but some of us are really good at analyzing documents. Not all of us can do contextualization. Maybe you may suck at contextualization, but mm -hmm. you're good with hip and soap. Hmm. Okay, so let's be strategic. And what I mean by that is pretty simple. Let's say you really dislike contextualization. Okay, you're not good at it. It just never clicks. That means mm -hmm. you have to aim to do the thesis, mm -hmm. at least one of these evidence points, or maybe even two of these evidence points, and then just one other point. Like, look at what, what I'm talking about here, guys, and I want you to think about this. So you can get your thesis point. That's one I need you all to aim for, okay? Your evidence points, if you look right here, you can just use two documents, okay, to support your argument. If you do that, you're getting one and two points. That means you're at three right now. And now all you have to do is get more points. That could be an analysis and reason. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm doing my class. One evidence. That's all you got to do is get four points. We're pretty yeah, sure to, yeah, that that's going to do it. Yeah, yeah. That's actually not a lot. It's not a lot. 
four out of 10, it will probably get you to get a point, uh, to, excuse me, to get a three. That's what we're thinking, okay? Now, does this mean you only write an essay to get four points? No. No, nah, I would say an, a, a number that I think is, is available to do. I think you guys can get a five easy. Let me explain why I think you can get five points really easily on this, okay? I think all of you can get the thesis, yes. okay? So that's one. I think all of you can, you know, use an argument, uh, use two documents in, and use it to support an argument, okay? That's, that's three points right there. And I definitely think that all of you can come up with one outside piece of evidence. That's just meaning one thing that relates to the prompt that, has, that is relevant to the argument. You bring in outside evidence. But if you don't think you're good enough there, you still got three points. But look at the analysis and reasoning. If you do hip or soap and you choose one of them, again, you don't need to do all four. If you just find the purpose or the point of view for two documents and how it relates to uh, and relevant to your arguments, you're gonna get a five. All right, that's not, that's not hard to get five points. So it's better to aim higher, like obviously aim to get as much as you can, all these points, but it's, it's not hard to get four points on this. It's really not hard to get five. So we need to aim as high as we can. And to be honest, I think Shreesan has really good advice right there. Focus on getting like a perfect score. But the reason I don't think everybody can focus on getting the absolute perfect score is that some of us know we're not very good at contextualization. Maybe we're not gonna, maybe we're not very good at content knowledge because if you're not good at the content knowledge, you may not be able to get the evidence beyond the documents points. You know, um, Elliot's asking me a question. Wait, so evidence, you only need to use two out of the documents in total. No, 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 look. To get the third piece of evidence point right here, supports an argument in response to the prompt using at least four documents. Okay, you can use the content of the documents but uh, that's only gonna get you one. To support an argument with two documents, you get two points. And then if you support an argument in response using all four, you get the three total points for evidence. Um, has everything um, I've said made sense so far? Any questions? No one says anything. Um, we'll keep doing. Remember the DBQ is only five documents in total. Um, if anybody knows who Z85 is, I don't know who the heck this, per this person in the waiting room, but uh, who the heck is this? Who are you, Z855? <laughs> All right, Ianche, five is not the highest score. Look at how many points there are on the DBQ rubric. There's 10. What I'm saying to you is that I think that if you get a four or a five points on this rubric, you will get a three on the AP exam. I think if you get a six or a seven on this rubric, say you get a thesis point, contextualization, uh, two evidence points, an evidence beyond the document, and an analysis and reasoning, that's a six, you will get a four. And I think if you get an eight or a nine, I think you're gonna get a five on this AP exam. Uh, Shreesan, I'm not including the complexity point because I mean, that's only 2% of all AP world people got that point. So that's it. Um, Mateus, 45 is gonna be enough, dude. You really will, because you don't have seven documents now. You have uh, five. You got this, dude. All right. Uh, Malcolm, you do not get contextual. No, if, if you do contextualization poorly, you don't get points taken away. 
at all. Um, Elliot, if you're confused about the evidence part, just think about it like this. You can get a point, one singular point, if you use the content of two documents to address the topic of your prompt. Now, if you use two documents total, and you use those documents to support your argument, that's two points. But in order to get three evidence points, you must use all four documents to support your argument. Um, okay, some people want me to go into in-depth what to say to go into each point. So let's go ahead and go through this. Um, Keisha, let me answer that your question before we do it. At what time? Uh, yeah, Elliot, yes, that's what you're supposed to be doing the whole time, supporting your argument. But they, they've adopted it to scale it up for people. Um, Keisha, what time should we start hurrying? I would say that, again, I said this at the beginning, um, 10 to 15 minutes to read and analyze the prompts and you know see how the document answers the question. Five minutes to outline, uh, set up your groups, and then 20 or 20 to 25 minutes to write it. That equals to 45 minutes exactly. So I would practice with 20 minutes to write, maybe five minutes to review your work at the end. Um, Diego, I don't know why it exists either. It's really hard because the complexity point just means that all of your arguments are extremely complex. It would, it would sound like it's coming from a textbook. All your arguments are complex to the point where you are examining uh, the purpose and historical situation of all the documents. It's, it's really tough. It really is. Um, sometimes even the best writers don't get it. Um, so here's what I'll do. Uh, I really want to get into contextualization today. So I'm going to save my explanation for each, uh, each of the DBQ rubric points. Um, because look in front of you guys, read what the rubric is telling you. And it tells you exactly how to get those points. You don't need me to break it down. It's already broken down for you right there. Um, if you're getting caught up on relevant to the argument, let me give you a example. So, and, and you know what, this is an example from the Heimler video, but maybe you haven't seen it before. But if I have been out sick, let's just follow me for a second here. I am out sick, okay? The teacher has given a test on the day that I was out sick. I am gonna return to school, okay? and want to take my test. I want to take my test, but I can't just go in the room and say, teacher, I'm here to take my test. Well, why should I allow you, the teacher's gonna say, why should I allow you to take this test over? Now is when you've gotta use your arguments and support it. So say you have a document from your doctor. Hey, my doctor's note says, I was at the doctor and I had the flu, or I had a sickness, and now I am back. This shows that I was not here for a specific purpose and that before you broke your leg, yes, Elliot, um, that you were unable to be in class that day. So this is a reason why I should be allowed to make up the test. That is relevant to the argument and it supports your argument to uh, why I should be allowed to take this test. All right. So now with that being done, let's get to the meat of today because we've talked a lot. Let's talk about contextualization and that's right here, okay? This is where you are gonna describe events that are broader to the historical context of the prompt. Excuse me one second, guys. Honey, oh, let me mute myself so you guys don't have to hear everything that I say, weirdos. <laughs> Guys, give me one second. Excuse me. Never mind. We're good. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this. Um, 
you need to focus on, I know the rubric says processes that occur before, during, or continue after the time frame. What I want you guys to focus on is things that happen before. Okay. There's a reason for that. And I think Heimler makes it super easy when he's talking about contextualization. Okay. He's talking about events or people or places, things that happen and relate to the prompt that happened 50 to hundred years before. Okay. Um, things that happen. So let me give you a, and I guess Malcolm is asking about giving us an example of contextualization. And I can give you that. You actually have examples, but let me give you a second to go through here. So everybody, you still have access to my website, correct? Everybody can unmute them. Everybody is unmuted and see. Okay, good. So if you're on my website, go to down to here where it has a DBQ info rubrics and this DBQ skills practice. Okay, some people are saying they can't unmute themselves. Hold on one second. Let me see if I can. All right, I've unmuted everybody. So and I, the option is allow participants to unmute themselves. So you should be able to do it. But in case, don't worry, type it into the uh, uh, chat. So let's go ahead and go back to sharing my screen. She's on shut up. Oh, Elliot, stop giggling. All right. Uh, so. Please, what I want you guys to do is you see these DBQ practices, yeah. contextualization, understanding the documents, um, using the documents, document analysis, thesis. This is where we're going to be practicing today. All right, so click on DBQ practice number one, contextualization. Or open this on your computer. This was made by another teacher. I did not make this, but I really like it. All right. So what you're going to do is that this is going to give you, and this is going to help Malcolm out because here's the example of contextualization right here, but it's going to give you a bunch of prompts. Look, using the documents provided, evaluate the extent to which the industrial revolution negatively impacted the lives of women and children in industrial societies during the 19th century. Wow. So it gives you a lot of prompts and now it's giving you an area so you could download this document. All right. You can download it straight away and type into it. Practice contextualization. All right. So what I want to do right now with you guys is go through one example. So right here, an example is right here. Using the documents for writing. Evaluate the effects of various strategies implemented. I want to see the chat is going nuts right here. Um, how do we type it? Um, when you click on it on my website, you should be able to download that to, uh, to your computer. Or if you don't want to do that, it's fine. That's why you have a piece of paper and pen. Don't copy the prompt down. Just practice the contextualization on a sheet of paper. All right, so going back to the DBQ practice number one. Using the documents provided, evaluate the effects of various strategies implemented by governments that promoted their own state-sponsored visions of industrialization during the period 1750 to 1900, okay? Here is an example of contextualization for this sort of DBQ prompt. All right, so it goes into um, details and expands upon those details of things that happened before this prompt. All right. That way it guides your readers in. All right. It contextualizes what's happening before the prompt. And then here's your prompt and allows you to continue with your explanation. All right. That is contextualization. It's bringing somebody in. It's another example. What do you need to what do you need to know about, you know, these particular topics that would help them understand or at least get what you are trying to say? Um, so here is another tool that I have for you guys. For a 
contextualization. If you're back on my website, you guys following me so far? Okay, if you're following me, look, there is help with contextualization right here. Please, it is on my website under DBQ Info and Rubrics. Follow along with me. Click on it. This could be something useful for you guys, depending upon the prompt. If the prompt is from 1200 to 1450, you can see 1200 to 1450. These are all of the bigger sort of concepts and um, topics that are in this unit. Okay, 1200 to 1450 included things like world religion spread, the African kingdoms, you know, the Mongols. Unit two had Trans-Saharan, Indian Ocean trade, the Black Death, spread of technology. These are all things that could be useful for contextualization for a prompt. So going back to here, your DBQ practice. 1750 to 1900. And please type in the chat or just say it because your mic should be unmuted. Looking at this paper, what else could you use um, for contextualization for this unit? For unit three? Well, yeah, because again, look, 1750 yeah. to 1900 CE is unit five and six, right? Uh, so what else could you use? for this particular style prompt. Again, it's talking about the, it's talking about visions of industrialization. What can you take from here? Okay, maybe you want to use three son is typing in the chat. Innovation such as gunpowder and cannons and navigation, maybe you can use that from the previous time frame to show how things were started to be made faster and more and different. I wouldn't use disease because it's got to relate to the prompt. I wouldn't use disease at all, Shri Sun. Ahmed, it's not a contextualization and it's not an overview of the DBQ. It's things that's happening prior to the prompt. So for me, I'm looking, at this, I'm looking at industrialization and I'm like, man, this is easy. I'm going to start talking about, you know, this maybe I'll address the printing press, you know, or I'll talk about how, uh, you know, they were European nations were becoming imperialistic and they had access to all these raw materials from all of their colonies, which allowed for industrialization. You see how I'm making those jumps there? Imperialism allowed for them to have more raw materials, which allowed more industrialization. Okay, you could talk about the railroads, you know, and how it helped to promote industrialization. It moved technology, it moved... Um, the spread of raw materials, maybe. Yeah. Where, um... Camilla, advancing in technologies. Yes, of course. Where? But you're using details, okay, from it, and you are expanding upon those details. That's from Heimler himself. Where? Explain and connect those terms to the prompt. Um, Abraham is saying trade. Um, sure, you could probably use trade to connect it still. Um, urbanization. Let's, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that has to do with, um, industrialization because as the world became more industrialized, you saw the process of urbanization take place. <clears throat> so you could possibly use that, you know, you talk about, you know, I can even see that essay planned out, you know, you talk about, you know, here, here's the beginning of the industrial revolution. Here's how it was changing cities. And people were moving to cities more because that's where these things were. And then you connect government in there and be like, well, as industrialization really took off, governments took control of the process. And that's when you could talk about the state-sponsored visions for industrialization. 
So here's what I want you guys to do right now. After all that's done, I want you to go ahead and do number one. All right, do one. And here's the, here's the, here's this. And you could type this on your own thing. You can write it out on your own thing. I'm fine with either way. I want you to do number one. Mm. And we will get back together. If you want to type, this is definitely practice, Michaela. This is all we're doing is skills practice and really trying to help ourselves do better here. Um, you can use the help with context right here. You may use this. Don't go into your notes or anything like this. Um, but try to make contextualization. All right, for number one right here. I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to do so because it shouldn't take you too, too long. Use the help with context if you need to, but give me contextualization. All right, now I will get back with you in a second. Give me one minute. You do your, you do your writing. Does anybody mind if I stop sharing my screen or is anybody using my screen to see the dot to see the uh what I'm what I'm showing you guys? I am. I'm using it. Okay, you guys are using my screen. Okay, no problem. Malcolm is asking, can you switch the context? I'm not know what you, I don't know what you mean. Are you talking about, oh, wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about this, Malcolm? Okay, so pull it up on your screen so I can keep up the actual prompt. Okay, pull it up on your computer. Okay, I'm gonna start reading. I'm gonna start reading some that are being put here. Uh, during the next one. <laughs> are you gonna come in here and stop bothering me now, boy? Hey, don't stand on that. I've already told you that, boy. Don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, give me a second. Uh, Shri Sun, I believe that your uh, 
thing works, I think you need a sentence that connects it to the prompt. Something like, um, when you see with, with all these changes, like this is what I would put, your, your contextualization works and I like it. I think that you would say something that with all these changes in society and business and commerce or something along those lines, I would say something like that. Um, that um, these uh, lives of women and children were being negatively impacted due to da 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 da, da and you go on. So you kind of use a kind of a statement to connect your contextualization to your thesis. Uh, let me see, Mateus. Uh, due to factories being made less than space, one woman should force more wrong on Okay, see, Mateus, you're actually answering the question there. You're not actually like, that's not contextualization. You're actually answering the question. Uh, same with you, Elliot. That's actually answering the question. I'm asking you guys to do contextualization. Ahmed, same thing. You're doing... Um, you're doing a, um, you're kind of giving kind of things as to how they were negatively impacted, but that's not contextualization. Yeah, Elliot, yours sounds more like a thesis than it does contextualization. Uh, Naomi, I look at, I'm looking at what you're saying here. Um, I answered the question, but can't contextualize. It's okay, like, it, it's really okay. Like you just, it takes a little bit of practice. Any other examples typed into the chat? Oh, here we go. Ianche. Okay. Before the. Okay. Yanshe, you're, you're very, very close. I think you need just a little bit more detail on the thing here. Cause it's kind of like you went like here, they worked alongside or along the farm and da da da. But then you just immediately switch to after the industrial revolution, maybe a gradual process, like as industrialization took hold, you know, people moved from farms into cities and less and less work was needed on the farms so kids and women went to work in the factories which had all these bad things and that's when you can get into your thesis mm -hmm. make sense Yanche? yes okay. uh diego the 18th century argo for equalities I think I made i'm reading um diego's right now <laughs> I can't, I can't go, guys, this is going to sound kind of bad, but the, I can't go pee with you right now, buddy, okay? I'm working with my students. All right, but if you need to go pee, just go pee. Go, you got this. Uh, excellent example, Diego. Good job. Really good job there. Really good job, actually. Yeah, I like that. You would get the thesis point, I'm uh, sorry, the contextualization point, no doubt. If you haven't seen his example, guys, uh, check it out in the chat. I'm trying to catch up. I'm about 21. Um, yeah, but, and Elliot, I see like you wrote the whole essay, kids don't talk like that. Guess what? This is what they want. You are a col you are getting college credit here, y'all. That's what you have to do. Hey, guys, don't spam chat with stupid stuff right now, okay? Annabelle Tyran, if you want to stay here. Do the right way, do the right thing. Um, Angelina, okay. Angelina, I like it, I like it. Mm. I would give you one more piece of advice and this is something um, from Heimler and from AP readers, the ones that are grading your essays are telling you guys to do. You have everything you need, Angelina, 
except one thing, and that's a detail. You don't expand upon one detail. Okay, so let me give you an example. You have all those things there, which is great, okay? But you don't mention the actual name urbanization. Now, I want you guys to hear me, hear me out on this, okay? So whatever you're doing, please hear me out because Angelina did a good job here, but it's, it, it may not get the point with an AP reader. So here's the deal. See how where she says they began to start moving from farms to cities? What is that called? Urbanization. That's called urbanization. Now look again at what Heimler says. To get the contextualization point, and this is the same thing that I've heard from AP readers, <laughs> use two to three vocab terms and explain and connect those terms. You know what I'm saying here? So if she would have put, I'm going back up in the chat to go to her thing. If she would have put- I said that earlier. <laughs> yeah, if you'd have put urbanization there, that would have worked. For instance, uh, another way she could have done this. The machines in factories weren't made to be safe for, with the so young ages and knowledge. You would also be able to get a good point here if you talked about the types of machines being made. Like what? What kind of machines were made in this time frame? Steam engines, okay. What about like the, the power looms and things like that? The uh, spinning, all those different uh, machines, the, the presses, yes, all those things were not safe. Cotton gins, all these things weren't designed to be safe. So you see how using urbanization, um, power loom, water frame, all those things are using the details. So you can't just say like, you know, Indian Ocean trade expanded because of technology. You want to say Indian Ocean trade expanded because of technologies like the compass and astrolabe. The compass allowed sailors to travel more efficiently, know the directions, um, you know, and chart their progress more carefully. You see, you're taking a detail and expanding upon it. All right, so that is contextualization right there. Yes, add a lot of details and explain them. But again, Naomi, you have to make sure your details relate to the prompt. You don't want to talk about like religion when you're talking about industrialization. Make sense? It needs to relate to your prompt. Okay. So with that making sense, um, I, we were, I was kind of a long time today. Um, yeah, it, I will, if you guys want to continue, I'll do as many examples. I'll, you guys want to do another one? You guys want to do number two? I'm down. I've got some time here, so. Oh, Namrata kind of coming in and wanting to, to mess with me. Okay, Namrata, I'm a read yours. I'm gonna read it. If the Chinese had strong community respect to stay home to serve the home and take other children home. Okay, I see what you did there, Namrata. I see what you did. Um, it would need a little bit more, like you need to have a little bit more in there to get the contextualization point so it truly contextualizes it, but I like where you're going with it. I do. And you proved me wrong. Yes, that you can use religion when talking about that. So yay, appreciate it. I like it. If you have Spanish, it's okay. Go ahead. This is not mandatory. I am going to record this or excuse me, I am recording this. And I will post it. But so let's go a second example. Mateus, I'll be doing as many of these meetings. I'll do another one next Wednesday. Um, I will also do more with you guys if you want. All right, no problem. Um, like for example, 
Mateus, if you really want some help, show up on Friday during my normal class time, you know, my normal office hours. And this is for anybody, to be honest. If you guys want to show up during my normal office hours and you guys want to do some more stuff like this, great. I'll be here. You tell me what you want to work on. I got you. My point of being on this Zoom is to not, you know, entertain myself. You know, to help you guys. Wait, for all the people leaving, don't, I, oh, well, whatever. You guys can tell them. You guys can tell them that we're going to do, I tell you what, let's wrap this up by doing one more example for people that are staying. Let's do one more example. Let's do number two. And then I'm going to show you guys where you can find the answers to all this. People started leaving before I had a chance to say that, but I have the answers to all of these and they're on the website. So you can practice and then compare them to some already good ones. So let's do number two. Using the documents provided, evaluate the causes of the rise of nationalism throughout the world during the period 1750 to 1900 CE. Go ahead and start writing contextualization for the second one here. Okay, Ahmed is saying, I don't really get this one. So look, evaluate the causes of the rise of nationalism. So what caused people to start thinking about nationalism on a grand scale? So again, look at the time period, 1750 to 1900. Help with context. What was happening prior to the rise of nationalism? Okay, and you know nationalism happened 1750 to 1900. What was happening prior to it? Okay, what caused the rise of nationalism? All right, I have somebody in here. Okay, Shri Sun. Okay, I can, I can get that. I like that, Shri Sun. <clears throat> I like that, Shri Sun. You even have a detail there. You're bringing them Islam. That's good. You're providing a specific example there. But it is an example. Okay, it's not bad. It really is it's not bad. I would, I would rather you probably use something that connects it to the rise of nationalism um, I mean, you could do that with Islam. You could do that in Europe. You could do that in the United States. Like, there's a lot of things you could do with that. It's okay to do what you said. Um, Ahmed, um, I, you probably could. I'd have to read it, though. All right. You would have to, again, provide the detail there. Again, when you when you have it, uh, some of your typing, or if you want to write it and send it to me later, that's fine. I could help you out there. Um, type in the chat. I'll go over it with you guys for the next few minutes. Here's some people typing. That's good. If you have questions, if you have your uh, example of uh, 
contextualization done. Don't let me rush you. There's no rush here at all, guys. I will stay on as long as you want me to for this first one. Um, and I'll, hopefully I'll be able, once we don't have to go over all these small details, you know, uh, for the next sessions, they'll go a little smoother. Uh, could I use industrialization to tie into this? Yeah. Yeah, I could. I think you would definitely use industrialization to tie into this, most definitely. Um, because from 1750 to 1900 is the Industrial Revolution. You know, people are changing from a largely agricultural society to an industrialized one. So yeah, that's gonna that's gonna move to, you know, a different types of economy, which is gonna move to saying, hey, that means they're gonna need raw materials to fund and to fuel this industrialization, which means imperialism may be tied in. All right, Diego. Uh, European nations were massively expanding during the 18th century. I think, Diego, I think that's a good example as well. I think that's a really good way to talk about nationalism as well. You that, that ties into Africa and in the next one. That's great. That's good, man. That's good. Yeah, Sri Sun, yeah, you could definitely rise of nationalism in, in Russia would definitely be an easy one. An easy one there, most definitely. Um Very nice, very nice. Yeah, Hitler taking power would work too, Shri Sun, most definitely. Well, yeah, definitely, definitely, because the after World War One, that that pride in Germany and blame the other people. Yeah, most that would work. All right. Um okay, as tension run. Okay, Alicia, you got the right idea. Alicia, you, you, you definitely have the right idea. Now the thing is, you wouldn't get the point because you didn't expand upon them. Now, if you talked about the scientific revolution uh, and or the French revolution, just if you were to just to choose one, like the French revolution, okay? And then expand upon how that created, you know, these ideas uh, and these feelings of national nationalistic tendencies, that pride in one's country, that independence movement, because maybe that you they looked at the Americans, you know, who developed an American identity. You know, that would work. But you have to take that that vocabulary word, the sign of revolution or French Revolution, and expand upon it. You just mention it, you don't expand upon that. Make sense, Alicia? Or Alicia, excuse me. Um, just real quick, is anybody still working on one? Oh, there we go. Ahmed. One cause of one. Um, Ahmed, I see that you're still, I see that you're trying to use the, uh, just like a few other people. Some of you guys are still trying to use the, uh, like the thesis kind of thing where you use, uh, the, the dates and stuff. You could do that, which is fine. Um, I see. Okay, so I see what you're trying to do, Ahmed, but you're falling into the same trap as the person, uh, not the person, direct, not, not Alicia, but somebody else. I forget who it was. You don't actually mention a anything. Like, you don't give me a detail. So what, what was the new church and the new religion? You know, and, and how would that, and to be honest, it sounds like you're, you're writing, okay? What's happening is that it, like read your writing. It sounds like you're talking to the person. You are writing a college level essay. You gotta slow down a little bit, form your sentences. 
Yeah, Shree Sun. You, that's what I'm saying. A specific vocabulary word or a specific, you know, topic and expand upon it. Okay, the same kind of thing. You could be, take, you know, one part of it, like going back to, um, uh, let's go back to Diego. And he specifically mentions the scramble for Africa and, you know, how European nations were expanding there. But he specifically mentions the scramble for Africa and expanded upon that. He didn't just leave it at, ex at scramble for Africa. He expanded upon what came before and after and what was related to it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to stay on this. I'm going to try to stay right here as much as I can, but I want to show people. If you are just here kind of paying attention slash writing your own on your own papers, here's what I want you to do. Or if you're done with the contextualization, if you're still typing, keep on typing. Go ahead. All right. If you want to get the answers, and I know that this is kind of weird, like, but this is all practice. I know you guys aren't just going to go ahead and just, Luke, Luke, give me a few more minutes. All right, but if you're going to make a lot of noise, you've got to be in another room. Daddy? Yeah. You going to sit right there? Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. Oh, okay. Before I go into what I was going to say, let me read Yanche's. I think those are rising materials. Okay, I like the first part of it, and then nationalistic type movements such as signing the declaration. You know what? I, I think this works still. I think this works still. Um, but I don't know if imperialist ideas works. Uh, yeah, it works it too. I think that could work, Yanche. Yeah. I think that could definitely work. Um, so back to what I was saying with these context practices. So we're working on DBQ practice day number one, contextualization. All right. Now, if you want all the answers, now I, I don't do this, okay, unless you are done with your practice or unless you want to go back and forth and kind of like compare what you're doing. This is practice. If you go down here, you see where it says exemplars, y'all? Exemplar means these are already done. These are the answers to the practices. So all of you, and again, these are just some answers. It doesn't mean these are the correct answers. Remember, contextualization can be a variety of things. Okay, so it's not like the answer, but it's giving you an example of a good answer. Does that make sense? So where it is, again, exam review, come down to where you found the practice. Day number one, contextualization practice. Day number one, contextualization exemplar. Click on it and it's gonna open up another document and you'll see that it's basically the exact same document except now it has all the answers. Okay, so you can go right here and going to number two, the one we were just working on, um, you could see what they did. Yeah, yeah, Shri Sun, just go down to exam review. Yeah, WAP exam 2020, DBQ skills practice. Here are the answers. All right, so you could see um, this recording I'm gonna make uh, a section in the exam review. I'll post it there. And I will also post it um, on the fourth, remote fourth quarter page as well. So it'll be posted in two separate places. All right, so you can see their example that they gave. Uh, the mid 18th century marked the time of moment, monumental change in human society as the world moved away from a agricultural economy towards an industrial one. 
Additionally, societies around the world experience revolution. Here's the sp specifics. Experience revolution gave examples, America, France, Haiti, Latin America, and new important nation states arose, Germany, Italy. Going along with these enormous historical developments was a rapid response and strong feelings of national support that these industrial that these industrializing, revolutionizing, and modernizing society invoked in each of their societies. So that would be enough. You see, they get a little specific right here and lead straight into the rise of nationalism. Yeah, you could use the revolutions. That's right. So um, that is what I wanted to do today was contextualization. Um, the next one we'll do, and I, please continue to practice this, go and practice the contextualizations and then use this document to help you see if you had enough specifics and see how yours lines up against theirs. All right. Um, if there's no questions, I'm going to stop the recording and uh, we'll, we'll go to, we'll, I'll see you guys next time. All right, everybody. Y'all have a good day. Mm -hmm.